Monday morning, and we're gonna get some coffee made. First and foremost, get our week started. September 21st, 2020, the year from hell. And we've got a hurricane, tropical storm coming in on the coast, kind of around Matagorda to Port O'Connor, somewhere around in there is what they're saying. We've already seen some of the rain coming through this morning. Uh, started last night, some of the outer bands kind of we're getting a little rain at the house. The town looks a little gloomy and dark this morning, even though it's super early. It's like, I don't know what time it is, 7, 7 15, something like that. I just got to the shop and I'm going to get some coffee made. That's the first thing I do. And then kind of figure out where we're at and what I'm going to work on this week, what videos I'm going to work on. I've got a few different projects going. I got one little project just for what something I want to do, this little belt. Usually I get here, make some coffee. Just want to kind of show you what my morning's like as far as what, what goes on in the shop. My wife usually, she's uh, since we've been here, she takes the kids to school in the mornings and then usually comes by here. This morning she's got a doctor's appointment. Something going on with her foot, I don't know. She's got bone spur or something, I don't know what she's got, but she's gonna go to the doctor. Get that checked out. I'll be by myself this morning. And I've got a video to edit for that belt that I just showed you where I'm doing a painting tutorial, just a real quick tip, just to show kind of my newer process I've been playing with as far as uh, using paint and using it really thinned out. So we're gonna work on that. Um, you can kind of see through this window. It's already looking pretty gloomy out there. Supposed to have quite a bit of rain coming. So I don't know how much molten will get. We're about, I would say, I would say we're probably a hundred miles, maybe better. Uh, I can tell you exactly how far I am off the coast. Give me one second. Come over here to Port O'Connor. I'm 108 miles from Port O'Connor, Texas. So that's basically the coast. That's where we're at. Still something to be concerned about when you've got a tropical storm or hurricane or anything. They were saying that it was going to be a hurricane, like a category one. I think it was for just a minute and then it kind of deteriorated. And so now it's a tropical storm. Wind's about 50 miles an hour. So I'm not a weatherman. All I know is it's going to get some wind, going to get a lot of rain probably the way it's coming in. So that's good because it's been super dry. All right, so one video I want to try to do this week is going to be this knife scabbard video. This is for the fold over type knife sheaths, not the pancakes. We've already done a video on that. And if you want that, there's a link right here. You can you can check that out. But this is going to be the fold over type, which are very simple to make. They fold over just like that. And you've got a belt loop for your belt to go through. And then your knife fits in there. Of course, you you sew it and trim it. The way I do them, it's it's pretty easy, and I think you'll really enjoy it because it makes things a lot easier. But I have tooling windows that basically they're set up for the type of knife, and so you don't need a knife to make these. You don't have to form it around the knife. You don't do anything. All you've got to do is pick the right tooling window for that particular size knife, and then tool in there, and then sew along the outside of that window, and the knife scabbard will fit. So we've done, over the years, we've got three that are the most common knives that people would bring as far as just regular pocket knives. One being the large eye brand, the big single blade eye, eye brand knife that a lot of cowboys carry. And so that tooling window, and then we've got a sod buster uh, or small case trapper, either one, uh, either the single blade sod buster knife or the smaller double blade trapper, this one will fit. It's a little smaller, you can see the difference in the tooling window. And then of course the most popular one, which is the double blade case trapper. Um, it doesn't have to be case, it can be a more maker or anything else, but just a double blade trapper, normal size pocket knife. This is the number one size that we sell. So if I was to make up a hundred of these, I would use this window because more than likely that's the knife everybody's carrying. I wanna do a video on that and I wanna set it up. I have to have a pattern pack and everything just like we always do. I think this is gonna be real popular because it's this makes it very easy to make up a bunch of these and have them in stock and just have them kind of out there for sale. You don't have to have somebody's knife. You don't have to wait for a custom order. You can make up a dozen of these, put them on your Instagram and sell them because you'll know they'll fit whatever knife. Um, you'll be able to tell them that fits a case, that fits a sod buster or whatever. And uh, it makes it really quick. So I'm going to work on making that video sometime this week or throughout the week. I've got some other projects going. I've got some wallets to make. And so there are flip wallet, like the video we just turned out, the money clip wallet. So I've got four of those cut out, one for stock, and then three of them are for uh, a customer. And so we're gonna work on those. I've got a few pancake knife sheaths cut out just so that I can add to my inventory. We've been trying to keep a little more stuff, uh, certain items in stock on our website. So I'm trying to get to where we can keep a bunch of those up and made and that way we have them plus when people come by here or whatever they're usually a really popular item somebody sees one it's like yeah yeah i'll, I'll use one of those so it makes it kind of easy 
Um, we've got a bunch of belts that we're gonna work on this week. I've got four that we prepped last week. And so, so this is a little kid belt. And so uh, I think it's 22 inches. The, the, the young man that I'm making this for can't, won't be able to wear this for quite a while. He's very, very young, but the dad wants to get one made for, actually the grandpa wants to get one made for him. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And then we've got three other belts that we're making here. And then of course we've got our saddles going. I've got four saddles started. More than likely it'll be these two that we kind of focus on. I've got two more trees uh, over there on the floor that we've already put ground seats and horns on. So once I get to this stage and we start hanging riggings and fitting parts, usually two is about the most I can handle. I really need all four of them going at the same rate, but we run out of space and I run out of focus, honestly. I can only do so much at one time. So usually I'll just stick to two but I like having them all just kind of moving forward a little bit. And here on the glue table, I've got the riggings for the red tree, that uh, the hog tree that we're building on. I've got those already skived and folded, so they're dry. Did that on Friday so they could dry over the weekend. We had a cow show on Saturday, so I didn't spend much time in here uh, this week. I was in here yesterday for a little bit doing a quick video just showing you how to thin uh, Angela's paint down and how, because I've been using the Angela's paint a lot thinner over the last few years. And so I wanted to update our original painting video where we just pretty much use the paint straight. And this way we're kind of thinning it down and you'll see in the video kind of what effect that gives you and how much better I think it looks when you do it that way. But um, we're kind of worked on that yesterday, but didn't get a whole lot of leather work done uh, at all. I was in here only a couple of hours yesterday afternoon because we're working on some other stuff at the house but these riggings are ready to go i've got my liners for my riggings they've already got a coat of glue on them and we'll put d-rings in build our riggings get them ready and then we'll probably get them hung this afternoon on this tree and then that tree will go quite a bit faster this one here this first tree is going to be an in-skirt rig i'm pretty sure i need to pull the work order and look at it but that's what we're going to do on that and then over here in the little repair area, so to speak, I've got this saddle that is broke down and ready to be washed. And so with this tropical storm coming in, I might just set it outside and let the storm take care of it. Probably not, but I need to get it washed. So we'll probably take it home. I still don't have an area in my shop equipped to wash saddles. I've got a big porcelain bathtub that we usually, it's on like a rack. And so it's up higher. And then I've got a rack that sits on top of that, that the saddle sits on. And that's what we usually wash everything with. Um, as far as saddles go and everything, but I don't have that set up here in the new shop yet uh, because I don't really know where I'm going to put it yet. And so we've just been washing them at home. I'll wash them at home in the barn or whatever and scrub them out over there and then bring them back up here. Uh, we're not doing a ton of repair here. Uh, we will. So anybody that wants to bring saddles to us, we, we certainly will do repair, but that's not the bulk of what we do. So especially um, repair on our saddles, we definitely will take care of, but just run of the mill repair, we're, we're not going to we're gonna to try to limit that to a, to a little little bit of an extent just because we got so much other stuff going on, but. I'll grab us a little cup of coffee this morning. The little pink packets. I usually use stevia, but I'm out. So sweet and low it is. I might have added just a little bit too much grounds to that coffee this morning, but that's all right. I haven't had any coffee drinkers come in yet. I figured here in this little bitty town, I'm sure the local older folks probably have a little joint that they meet up at and they drink coffee in the morning. Some of the you know, local ramrodders of the town, you know, but I'm expecting it at some point. When I was starting out building saddles in Bryan with Jimmy Plant, when I was a kid, I'd say a kid, I was in college, started working for him right before I graduated from college. He had a little band of guys that would always come around in the mornings because they knew he had coffee. Funny story was when I first started working for him, his workshop was on one sh one side of the shop and then you had the retail floor and then it kind of went back in there in a, like a little cubby hole headed to his office. And then there, it was still retail right there and some stuff on display in that little room, so to speak. But then he had a coffee bar kind of thing set up. He had a table, had all the coffee fixings, coffee, a bun coffee maker and uh, chairs. He told me one of the first things he told me when I started working there was he, he called everybody baby. And he said, baby, you see this? I got this set up right here because them oil field guys come in here, them cowboys, when it's raining outside, like it is today. He said, it, when it's raining, they'll come in here 
and they wanted to drink coffee. And he said, well, I used to have the coffee close to my workbench. He said, but they, they get them a cup of coffee and they want to lean right on your bench, right where you're trying to work. And he said, I ain't got time for that. I got stuff to do. I've got goals I've got to hit. I've got progress I've got to make on saddles. I don't have time to be with the coffee crowd. They want to come in and drink coffee, that's fine. He said, so I set up a little area over there. It's got chairs, it's comfortable. They come in, they can sit over there and they can jaw around and talk and laugh and cut up and drink coffee and I can still get some work done. He said, so that's why it's over there. And I thought, man, this guy is really, really smart. That's a good deal. I'm gonna learn a lot from this guy. Well, then about three or four days later, it was raining and people did come in. There was three or four guys that he knew that came in. They went back there. Hey, Jimmy, hey, Don. They went to the back and they made them some coffee and sat down and commenced to just having their morning conversation. This was about 7, 7.30 in the morning. Jimmy and I had already kind of started working on a saddle and doing some things and lining out our day. And about that time, he gave him about five minutes. And then all of a sudden, Jimmy took his apron off, took his work belt off. He said, I'm going to go get me a cup of coffee. And he went over there, and I bet he sat over there with them men for about two hours, drinking coffee with them and talking and laughing and cutting up. So I learned real quick, he didn't build that for them. He built it for himself. <laughs> so, but that's that's part of it, I guess, with the saddle shop. You know, he that was the place where people came to visit and, and hang out and kind of hear stories and talk and drink coffee. We don't have that here yet. And honestly, in 15 years, I've tried to kind of keep that out just to an extent. We always had visitors and people coming by and hanging out. But when it comes to that usual coffee bunch, we were kind of outside of town. So we really didn't have a lot of that. But um, you got to be careful with that if you're trying to be productive. It's fun and it's nice and all that. And you get to get involved in all the local gossip and hear what everybody's up to because that's usually where deals are made, you know, is at the coffee table in the morning uh, with guys drinking coffee like that. But we, we don't have that yet. Maybe possibly down the line we'll probably end up having a little old group of guys that come in in the morning to see what I'm up to and to get them a, a cup of coffee and get out of the rain a little bit. But as of right now, we don't. So that's a, that's a little saddle shop story. I just wanted to do a little video just kind of show you what my Monday mornings were like. I don't know what yours are like, but Monday mornings are getting a little bit more normal. You know, everything's real close. It's nice because we want to go to lunch, we just walk down the street. We want to go to town. It's 10 miles away. It's not 20 miles away. It's been good. Got a lot of projects going on at the house. I show some of that stuff on my Instagram stories. I might show some more, but we're just building some pens. We've got the horses down there. We've got the cattle situated. We've got to do some testing on some grass. My wife's the expert when it comes to the grasses and that kind of stuff. I stick with cows in this manner. I, I like my cows like this. And it's and the steaks. I like steaks. I prefer my cows coming wrapped in two types of paper. Paper that from Herman Oak Leather, they wrap my cows in paper or butcher paper. But that's the only two ways I like my cows. But now we have actual on the hoof live cows. So <sighs> I'm dealing with that. But it's not too bad. They're fun. The kids love them, um, so it's a, it's a good deal. But we're working on that, and so just a little odds and ends and a bunch of little junk and try to get some of these projects done before the winter comes because we're going to have a hard winter down here. No, we don't. Our winters in South Texas usually aren't anywhere near what winters most places are, but you know, if we get some freezing weather and stuff, it's it's cumbersome for us because we're not used to it. And I'd much, much prefer the 100-degree heat than I would the freezing temps, but we'll deal with it the way it comes. We'll make it work. But that's it. I just wanted to do a little Monday morning briefing video just see, so y'all can see a little bit behind the scenes kind of what's going on at the shop, what I plan on working on this week, and we'll see if I get any of it done or all of it done or maybe completely different things done and none of this done at all because you never know how the week's going to go, and that's usually how it happens. So anyway, if you like this type of video, let me know in the comments, and that way we'll know to do more of them every week like this, do a Monday morning briefing video every week. I don't know. Might be kind of cool depending on what we got going on. Some weeks are really boring and we don't have a lot going on, but usually we've got something going on on YouTube for you uh, during the week. So you might want to know what's coming up, have a little heads up. And so maybe that video will be pretty cool. But anyway, have a good week. Be productive. Make it happen. If you've got any questions, let us know.